Hi everybody, uh, it's Espresso Mechanic here. Um, I came across this tutorial by Facade uh, a few days back um, and I was looking at it and found it very interesting actually the way he'd set this up. Uh, he's created basically a text wipe using a spline mask um, and he's randomly moved null objects which are attached to the points of the spline at the top and you can see them as the diamond objects here. Uh, and he basically did this with an espresso expression. But during the course of his tutorial, he wondered if there was a way to streamline the espresso expression because without being disrespectful to him, he'd done it in quite a long-winded way. Um, well, there is indeed a way that you can streamline this particular expression and uh, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that right now. So without further ado, I'm going to cut across to Cinema 4D where I've got a similar setup uh, in the viewport here. So what we've got, and this is exactly the same setup as facades actually, he's got an extrude nerves with a spline mask in it, he's got a text and a rectangle which he's going to, which he uses to um, wipe the text on from the bottom up. At the moment it's fully visible but we won't worry about that too much, we'll just get rid of those actually. So you can see the spline mask uh, rectangle is down here, we, we can't see all of it but um, it's down there. It's a funny shape because of the uh, the interpolation of the points um, in the in the rectangle. Um, and if we just go across to our structure manager here, uh, it would help actually if I just selected the rectangle and then went there. Okay, so we can see that we've got six or well, seven points actually in the uh, in the rectangle there. We're only interested in using points naught through to four. We're not bothered with five and six, okay? Because the five and six points are down the bottom. We don't have to wiggle those about. We don't have to do anything funny with those, okay? So that's the first thing we need to have a look at there. At the top, we've got a master object here, uh, which contains the five null objects, which are going to be attached to the points of the rectangle across the top here. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to select the rectangle and get the points, because at the moment they are in the correct positions. Um, and I'm going to show you in a minute what actually happens there. I was going to move them down deliberately. Okay, so without further ado, I'm going to open the Expresso Editor, and I've already set the tag up there, and we'll start work on this and get it underway. So the first object that we need to bring into the Expresso Editor here is the rectangle. We bring that in, and we're going to give that an object output. I'm then going to bring in a point node. Okay, so it's in the Expresso General down to point node. At the moment it's yellow at the top, don't worry about that at all. We're going to connect the um, object output of our rectangle to there and, and then we're OK. And we'll add the point position because of course that's going to be the all important part of this. Now what Facade had done in his tutorial, he'd used this setup and just copied it so that he had one of these for every point. And he, this was the bit that he was wondering about, can we streamline this? Well, we certainly can, and, and that's what we're about here. Now, the all-important part of uh, streamlining this is to use an iteration. So if I come into New Node Expresso, come down to Iterators here, and now the hierarchy is the one that we're going to use. That's the all-important one here. If we have a look at the parameters uh, of the hierarchy over here, we can see at the top we've got a reference point. Now, straight away, it's come up as master. So it's, it's using the master object as its reference point here. The next important point that we need to have a look at here is the start path. Now we've got a letter D in there. So that means that the master we're looking at the master object, but we're going down one level and we're looking at the child objects within the master object, okay? The iteration path is all important too because it's got an N. Now the N means complete, always look at the next, 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 next object, okay? So it does that and then loops round and it does it ad infinitum and it does it at light speed. It's so fast, you just, you know, it's faster than you can blink. Um, so that's what it's doing. It's just whizzing round in a circle uh, and, and looking at those objects one after the other ad infinitum. So the, that's the first little bit of, of making this happen. The next thing I'm going to bring in, or the next node I'm going to bring in, is an object index. We've only got the one input. It's just the instance, so we can't change that. So we'll drag or connect the object output from the hierarchy to the instance input of the object index. And now the hierarchy is passing 
each of the individual nulls in quick succession into the object index here. I'm just going to swap these two over. I like the index at the top for this because it's tidier. We've only again got those two um, outputs that we can choose from, so they're both there. Now the index value is a number between 0 and 4 because we've only got five objects and we always start with 0. So that index value can then be passed to the point index of the point node in quick succession. So we can connect that to there. And that means that we're now iterating through the point indexes. And now if you look at what's happened here, something very strange has happened to the rectangle spline. We've got all the points gathered at the centre of the world. Well, what's happened there, and we don't need to worry about this at all, is that we've, we've literally iterated through the, the various points that we're looking at, points 1 to 4, or 0 to 4, I beg your pardon. And because we've got nothing connected to the point position, all the values of the vector points are, are 0. So the x, y, and z the x, y, and z values are all zero. So that's why the points have been gathered at the centre of the world. But don't worry at all, that's no problem at all. We're going to fix that in a minute. OK. So the next thing we're going to bring in is a condition node from our logic menu here. So I'll bring that in. Now at the moment, we've got a switch and two import in inputs. I'm going to give us another three inputs to make five. And again, I'm going to connect my index output to my switch. So now, not only are we iterating through the points on the point node very, very quickly, we're also iterating through these inputs at the same time because both are synchronized, they're being controlled by the same value very, very quickly. So that's the next part of it set up. We're going to now get hold of our noise nodes and I need five of these because I'm going to generate five lots of random noise one for each point so we'll just move those down I'll just bring the editor up a little bit here um, move those down and what we'll do is set them up with different values in the scale I think which is I played around with this, the, and the amplitude is the most important one. And I found that uh, on the, in the scale, a value between um, 0 and 10, and, and, and in the amplitude, anything between 0 and 100 seems to work quite well. But it's an artistic thing. Have a play around with it, see what you think works best for you, really. It's, it's completely a matter of your own personal taste uh, as to what you actually want to, to visually see. So we'll put that in there. Three, that'll do. It's just to get this sorted out. Seventy-four. It, it really doesn't matter. It's, when I'm faced with doing random numbers, I never quite know what to put in. <laughs> but anyway, that's okay. And then once those are done, I'll just connect those to each of the inputs. Now the the final part of this really is just to bring this master in and it, this, it could be anything. I mean, you could set up another null object for this and, and, and use that as this particular node. This is essentially going to be a placeholder um, for the individual um, null objects as they're passed into it from this instance here. So what, what happens here is that as the hierarchy passes each individual null object into the object index here, they're then passed into this placeholder over here, which is the master, where we can do some work with them uh, and make them do the job that we're wanting them to do. So what we need next is their position Y. So we're going to play around randomly, well basically randomly make them move on their position Y using these noise nodes here. So we take the output, we plumb that into the position Y. And then the output here, what we need is the global position, simply the global position, because we must give uh, a vector value to the point position of the point node. So I'll just widen uh, that up a little bit. If I can do that. That's better. OK. Move that out of the way. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to try and show you what happens as soon as I do this. So I'm going to make that smaller. So we can see our... Uh, our various null objects here, our five null objects, and we can still see that our points are all there, but when I connect this to this, bang, instantly our points leap to the correct points, uh, To the each one of them is, is leaping to its correct null object, and that's exactly what we want, okay? 
And if we run the sequence now, we can see that they are indeed being randomly jiggled about. I mean, they're not moving very fast, and we can do something with the frequencies in here. If we alter those and make them slightly bigger, uh, we can make a change to that, um, the speed of them there. So, we'll, in fact, let's just see if we can get something a bit wild. So we can see that this, this point over here is the one that's being affected at the first. So you can see it's pretty wild. We probably don't want it quite so wild as that. We can probably do it, I don't know, three. Yeah, that's, that's quite nice, isn't it? Um, and again, if we just have a little play around with these, possibly do four there. It's giving it a bit, it's a bit, a little bit wilder there. And then perhaps we'll be a little bit more sensible with this one and make that two so that it doesn't go quite so mad. Um, you can do, obviously, point values. It, de it doesn't have to be solid uh, integers. It can be just anything you like, really. 3.2, something like that. So we've got a little bit more madness going on there now, a little bit more wildness about it, but not too much. Okay. So that's the expression. I mean, that's, that's in essence, is all we need to do with the expression to get this particular thing to work. To finish, um, to finish it off, what Fassard did, he got the master here and uh, he animated it so that it was drawing up over to the top of, of the lettering there. So we'll do that now. We'll just go back to the beginning and we'll, we've got it there. We've got the master, we've got the Y here, which is it's being controlled by Expresso as well, but we'll, it doesn't matter about that. We'll just put a, a point there, go to 90, drag this up here somewhere and do the same thing again. And now we've got our animation path in there, so we're going to draw those up over the cro over the letters and we're going to make them magically appear when we turn on our spline mask and our lettering. And if we just zoom in to make it a little bit bigger, go back to the beginning. If we play that now, they're being wiped from the bottom upwards, which is not necessarily what I want. So what we've got to do is just change the spline mask a two a intersect b and now we should get the result that we wish there we go and our letters wipe on very nicely so i've done the same sort of thing as facade's done we've just done it in a completely um, more streamlined way that's pretty much the tutorial um hope you've all learned something from it and that it's been enjoyable for you uh and that it's it gives you some ideas for some other uses. I mean, I've used this uh, to, to, to create some electrical arcs, actually, for another thing that I'm going to post pretty soon. You'll see the video for that. I've just made a little bit of a fake sort of ident thing that pays homage to the film uh, Metropolis. Um, it's, it's got a sort of similar special effect. It, was, it mainly was born out of uh, an experiment with using the glow uh, channel in in in, in the um, in the texturing. That's that's what I was trying to do, sort of creating a sort of electrical kind of glow sort of effect. Um, but anyway, I, I will be posting that one relatively soon. But uh, as I say, hope you've enjoyed having a little look at this. Um, have a play around, see what you can do, and uh, keep enjoying it. Okay, cheers. Bye-bye now. Bye.